Hi friends. Today in this video tutorial, we are going to learn uh, some of the very simple concepts uh, of that of the binomial theorem. So to uh, first of all, let's look into what's a Pascal triangle. It's a very famous di uh, famous diagram uh, which gives the coefficient of various expansions. Like uh, when we expand different terms, like when we have uh, when we express x, then its coefficient is one. If we express two variables x plus y raised to the power one, then we have uh, each uh, the coefficient of each of the variables as one. Next, if we express the coefficient of x plus y to the power two, we get x square plus two xy plus y square and you see that coefficients of these terms is 1 2 and 1 respectively similarly if you try to express x plus y to the power 3 then it will turn out to be x cube plus 3 x y sorry 3 x square y plus 3 x y square plus y cube so uh, the coefficients as you can see are arranged in the triangle as 1, 3, 3, 1. Similarly if you work out higher powers of x plus y to the power n where n uh, for this part is 4, the next 5, then 6, then 7. The coefficients of the respective terms that is the numerical value which is multiplied to the terms will remain uh, as given in the Pascal triangle. There is one special property which you uh, will note as that to obtain the next set of uh, values you can use the upper uh, values which uh, in the triangle are let's say if we want to obtain the this block then it will be the sum of the uh, upper hexagons which are touching its surface. So there are on, uh, there is only one hexagon which touches its surface. This is this one. So its value will be one. Similarly, for this we have only one hexagon which touches its surface. So we have its value also equals to one. Next, you see to obtain this coefficient, we see which of the hexagons above this touch it. So we have only one hexagon. So its uh, its uh, value will be one. Now, if you see this co this particular hexagon. It has it shares boundary with two upper hexagons. One is this, and other is this. So, as you see, the uh, sum of the upper hexagon, that is one plus one, is the answer to this one. Similarly, if you work out this, it will be uh, e uh, equal to the num uh, coefficient of the hexagons which are touching its surface. So, there's only one hexagon which touches its surface. Therefore, it's also its value is one. Similarly, if you see this three. There are two hexagons, one of which contains one and other contains two. So the value which comes in this hexagon is that of the sum of this and this. Similarly, if you try to look into other values like uh, this 20, we have two hexagons which touch its surface and its value uh, will be the sum of the hexagons, upper hexagons which touch its surface. That is 10 and 10. So we get a 20. Similarly, this triangle goes on forever. And if you uh, uh, just add on these coefficients, you could derive at the expansion of any of the uh, uh, power of x plus y. So let's uh, try to work out uh, this seventh power of x plus y. That is, if we try to find what is x plus y raised to the power 7, then simply, first of all, write down the uh, variables in descending order as such like x, x to the power 7 x to the power 6 into y plus x to the power 5 into y square plus x to the power 4 y cube plus x cube y to the power 4 plus x square y to the power 5 plus x into y to the power 6 plus y to the power 7 and fill in these coefficients from this particular last representation which is given. So the first coefficient will be 1, then we will have 7, then we will have 21, then we will have 35, 
then we will have uh, 20 sorry 35 again then we will have 21 then we will have 7 then we will have 1 so this gives us the expansion of x plus y to the power 7 now uh, as you as you might have uh, got an idea of uh, how to express uh, the higher parts of x plus y uh, you might be wondering that it would be very tedious to find the complete pascal triangle to get an expression for the respective uh, coefficients but this is simplified by the use of a, bino uh, a theorem called binomial theorem in uh, which uh, gives the expansion of a, uh, a plus b to the power n where n should be a only positive integer the expansion which it gives is that uh, a plus b raised to the power n will be equal to n c naught into a to the power n plus n c1 into a to the power n minus 1 into b plus go uh, as it goes on to n c n into b to the power n this c is same as that you uh, if you uh, might have learnt in the uh, permutation and combina combina combination lecture uh, this c stands for like I may write the formula here uh, n c r stands for n factorial upon r factorial n minus r factorial therefore this is n c 0 so this is equal to 1 this is n c 1 which is equal to n factorial upon n minus uh, 1 factorial into 1 factorial that is n and so on as you can see this first and last coefficient are same that is uh, Okay, I have not told uh, an important property here. Let me let me express that that n c r is equal to n c r sorry n c n minus r. It's very easy to prove because just write down the expression for these uh, these two terms. You will simply see that they are equal. Okay, so we have the coefficient of the uh, terms from uh, with e from equal distance from starting and the ending as same. That is. Uh, the first term, the coefficient of the first term and the coefficient of the last term will be same. The coefficient of the second first term, uh, second term and the second last term will be equal. That is, n c one will be equal to n c n minus one. Both are n and so on. Now let's look into uh, expressing some of the very preliminary and important special series which uh, come which we come across. Uh, several times. So the first important series is that of 1 plus x raised to the power n. Uh, so to express this simply what we will do is that we will uh, take the value of a is equal to 1 in the binomial expression and uh, take the value of b as x and just express as uh, the binomial theorem says. So when we express this we will get nc1 uh, sorry this is plus nc0 into 1 to the power 1 raised to the power n nc1 1 to the power n minus 1 into x plus dash 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 to ncn x n so if you express this from your general knowledge let's let's uh, for simplicity take n equals to 2 here so as you know that uh, if you take 1 plus x to the power 2 you get the expression as 1 plus 2x plus x square so let's try to work this out through the binomial expansion by taking n equals to 2 so if we take n equal to 2, we, uh, the first term will be 1 into 1 raised to the power 2 plus n that is n equals to 2 c1 1 raised to the power 1 into x plus 2 c2 1 raised to the power 0 into x raised to the power 2. So which simply comes out to be 1 plus if you just find out the value 2c1, it will come out to be 2x plus 2c2, which is equal to uh, 1, and we have x squared. So it is same as what we know from our uh, early understanding that uh, the binomial uh, theorem is valid for positive integer and only. Just keep the note of this particular thing. Many times people forget this and uh, make huge errors n should be should be should be a positive integer okay keep a strong note at that
Okay. So the next expression which we look into, uh, let's first of all clean it. The next expression which uh, we try to figure out is 2 raised to the power n. Very many times we are uh, in requirement of calculating the powers of 2. As uh, you might uh, know that all the uh, general systems of computer and other things are based on binaries. Uh, that means uh, on two digits. So we are often in requirement of finding powers of 2. So to, ex uh, to find smaller powers of 2, we uh, don't employ this meaning. But to calculate very large powers of 2, and in which uh, we might not be able to compute it directly, to use it to uh, up to a certain approximation, we find it by binomial theorem. And uh, to do that, what we do is that we take simply uh, the value of a equals to 1 and b equals to 1 and just express this. This particular series is very interesting and important. So I would like you to just keep a note at this. Okay. Now, uh, most of the questions which come under this uh, purview requires us to find uh, the coefficient of a particular term in the expression. Like if we are to find uh, the coefficient of uh, a raised to the power n in, sorry, um, let's take it as, if we are to find the coefficient of a to the power r in of our simply sim let's try to find out the coefficient of b to the power r in the expansion of a plus b raised to the power r. Therefore, uh, if you work out from the, uh, the simpler example here, you will see that uh, uh, the coefficient where b raised to the power n comes, uh, as you can follow that, the coefficient of b, let's say here it's 1. So we have nc1 here. Okay. Here it was b raised to the power 0. So we had nc0 here. So, and the term was the first term. Okay. Second term contained b raised to the power 1. Third term will contain b raised to the power 2. So therefore, as you can uh, simply work out by general uh, understanding that the coefficient, to find the coefficient of b raised to the power r, we have uh, in multiplication ncr okay as this particular value and this particular value are same and this is to be multiplied with a raised to the power n minus r you will often uh, you will always find that the sum of the exponents of two variables here add up to n it will always be the case Next thing which we note here is that to find the number of terms in uh, an expression, in an expansion, uh, you simply note that when we expressed 1 plus x to the power 2, we got 3 terms. Therefore, if you try to express more, uh, you will find, often you will find that the number of expression, no, sorry, number of terms in the expansion of 1 plus x raised to the power n will be n plus 1 always will be n plus 1 just try to work out some of the simple things and you will find that it's very easy to see that because we have uh, the coefficients running from n c naught to n c n so therefore it starts uh, the coefficient runs from 0 to n which makes us which gives us n plus 1 times